Today officially marks a year and a half of being fun employed. Layoffs are at its absolute highest. The competition with a candidates that seemingly have five plus years of experience versus yourself with barely one to two is at an all time high. Entry level jobs are no longer entry level. There's way more supply and just not enough demand. So what can you do? Go to a boot camp, get more schooling, get some certifications. Sure, all of that is great, but the key here is to focus on the roles you want and making sure you learn new skills that will help you get the roles you need, not just doing the little things to fill in the gap. Today, we're going to dive into one of these critical tech skills, and that's SQL. So to start, what is SQL and why is it important? SQL stands for Structured Querying Language. It is one of the most used and most important data analytics language. It's very important because it can be used in nearly every aspect of tech. Because whether you like it or not, you're gonna be using data in whatever future project or assignment that you're gonna have. You're gonna encounter it and you need to know how to use it properly and effectively in your project. At the same time, knowing SQL will help make you stand out even more, especially during interviews. Because they're saying like, hey, yes, I can do this. I can be a marketing person. Yes, I can be a UX designer or a data scientist, but at the same time, I can do this. It's just one of those things that will help make you stand out more and will be an even bigger flex during your interviews. All right, so let's dive a little bit deeper. How and why is it important? This is because you can pull millions, of billions, even trillions of rows of data within maybe like 10 to 15 lines of code. What do I mean by pulling data? That pretty much means grabbing everything you need from a certain database, but filtering it out so it's only everything you need and not the entire database. This is because in any given project, you're not gonna need the entire large scale scope of the data. You just need maybe a little certain portion. And this is overall to help increase efficiency because, because pulling everything, it just takes way too much time. It, it's too too much data. So grabbing only what you need will help simplify and make your entire project go by a lot quicker and more efficient. We'll get more into pulling data in just a little bit, but for now, that is one of the main value points behind it because nearly every position has SQL written in the job description. Whether it be project management, data science, analytics, engineering, business intelligence, finance to design, software development to even marketing. Every type of tech position would love for you to know SQL because yet again, it brings more value to you. Pretty much means that they don't need to hire a specific data analyst or data scientist or engineer. They could just hire you. They get a two for one deal, which at the same time means you can also ask for more pay. They'd rather give you half of what they're gonna pay the other person, right, than pay just two people individually, right? Say you're making 120,000 and the other person would make probably 100,000, they'll probably give you the 50 to give you in total 170. Pretty nice, right? So in the end, you make more money. It's mainly through this process called ETL, which is extract, transform, and load. Let's start with extract. To bring back up polling data, this is where we would actually pull all the data from the large data set, filter it out, pick what we need, and really just manipulate the data set so we have the cleanest and easiest to use from the get-go. This is the prep order. This is everything that will make your whole life and everything else in the future a lot easier if you get this right. This is why SQL is so important because this extract process, if you get it wrong, it really messes up results and you'll get false insights, which is not good for any company. Next is transform. Form. This is where we do all the calculations. So if we need to add certain columns up to get a specific financial value, or if we need to even switch data types, so switching from say like an XML to a JSON. This is like that like nitty gritty type work that honestly for me it's a pain in the ass. But it's things that are important because it's those little minute details within a data set that can uh, really make or break the set. So things like computed columns or just in general some further basic filtering that we couldn't do within the extract process. It's nice though because nearly every company right now is working in the cloud, which means that all of this is pretty much streamlined, whether it be through AWS or through Azure, it they make it pretty easy, which is nice. You really just need to know the, the map and the process and you can easily put it all together. And last but not least, this is load. This is where the final data set is formed and sent off to. So this is pretty much where you're building just in the cloud would be another like database, a mini database that you can then access and pull from as well. Uh, but it's pretty much the final set that you can use to start creating data visualizations or even building out an entire dashboard for your client or your managers or your executives to use easily so they can see those direct insights. What's nice about this process too is that it can be refreshed, right? So you want to refresh it on the daily just so we have the most up-to-date information every single day 
right away. This is where it's important though because you're able to get direct insights for the business. All of its needs, pain points, and issues to address, it can be found through this process. This is where it is extremely valuable and it all starts with knowing SQL. All right, now let's get into some SQL basics. So let's dive into some SQL basics. The first thing that we're gonna get into is the keyword select. Now, when you think about this word, think about the columns in a table that you're gonna be using. So in any table, there's gonna be, of course, columns, and there's gonna be rows. In the select keyword, you're gonna be picking out the columns that you want, because you're not gonna need every single column in an entire table. It's just, realistically, that doesn't make any sense. Again, one of the big goals of pulling data is to limit the amount that you need and getting only what you need, not the excess. So this keyword is really where you're able to pick out those columns and get the only ones that you actually need. In most scenarios at the start, I like to really just start off with the star phrase. This pretty much means we're gonna get all the columns. I just like to start off that way just to make it a little bit easier and make it just quicker just to go through. Usually like to pick the columns at the very end. Next is gonna be the keyword from. So this keyword is pretty much where you're gonna be picking the tables. Now in, in any given database, you might have about 15 to 20 tables. In the data world, we call them entities. So this is where you're gonna pick those entities or those tables and it'll help filter out more and more of what you actually need. So from here, I'm actually just going to pick, I do have an example table that I'm gonna be using. We're gonna be using this table. It's called recruiting season 21 to 23. This is pretty much my job hunting Excel sheet. This is what I've been using to keep track of everything. I have that connected to SQL so I can quickly do some insights if I need to. But as you can see here, we have all the data pretty much. Uh, when you do a select star from a table, it's just gonna grab everything that you need. So that's one of the quick things that you can do if you wanna just quickly get everything. But so we wanna dive a little bit deeper and see more specifically, every time I apply it to Apple, we can go from select star from the table name and then in the keyword where, this is where we can do some basic filtering. We can say where company, which is the column name right here, equal to, and then we'll do the dashes right here and we'll say Apple. So from here, we're just, we're gonna get all the results from Apple that I applied to. As you can see, there's uh, quite a bit. And from here, we can do some basic insights as well from that. Call us a basic query. Let's say the only things that I actually want now, we're gonna pick columns that we only want. Let's say I just want company, position, location, and then date applied. I'm gonna actually just call this R. So when you put some sort of letter or characters next to the table name, that's gonna be called an alias. And it's pretty much like a shortened version of the table. Um, so instead of having to type everything here, I can just say it's R. So I'll be like r.company, r.position, r.location, r.data applied. And this is pretty much a shortened way. Um, when you get multiple tables coming together, it can get really confusing. Having aliases can help distinguish those tables and make your code look cleaner, shorter, and an easier way to connect everything together. We're only gonna grab these ones. As you can see, we have all of that from just right here. Now let's say I wanna do a little bit more, right? Say I wanna get some basic aggregations in. So we'll do some basic aggregates. So we can do, let's do count. From here we can do select, and then let's just do a count star. That means it's gonna count everything. From here, if you wanna just do a count, C company, we can do that as well. And then if you wanted to grab just distinct, we can also do distinct as well. But let's just do a uh, count star to make it easier. So we're gonna do a count star and then we want to do it by location. So we'll do R dot location and then count star. What we need to add now is the keyword group by. This is pretty much gonna grab everything, all the unique unique values, unique rows, and it's gonna do a count by each of those rows. That's where this becomes really powerful, where you can do r.location. And as you can see here, we can, we can see very clearly all of the location names and the number of times that I have had an application with Apple from that location name. So we can get very specific on exactly what values we want and what we wanna get out of our data set. Now, it's really interesting as well. This is something that I actually did in a recent case study with this for myself. Let's do a basic aggregate. Basic aggregate will do count plus company. So we'll do select from, I'll just do grab this real quick. We don't need to have the where clauses in this case. We can just do group by c.company or r.company, sorry. And then we'll do r.company and we'll do count and then we'll call this num applications. Boom, we run this. Now we're able to see very clearly how many times I applied to each company. Very interesting data as you can see here, um, it is out of order and something that we can do now is make it in order. So we'll do order by here, we'll just do count, count star and then we'll do descending. Boom. And then from this data, we can we can see from all the companies I applied to, how many times I applied to each of them. Say I wanted to just get a top 10 or a top 20. I can also add that on the top right here. And I'll just get the 20 companies I applied to the most in the last two years that I job was job hunting. As you can see, that's very interesting that I applied to Apple 62 times, Amazon 48, Adobe 27. Like you can clearly see that I really like these companies and these are the main ones that I applied to because those were the most that I was interested in. That's an insight that you can clearly get from this. Another insight that you can see from this too is 
is that if you look on Apple's website, it's actually the easiest to apply to Apple. You can just quickly do that and it makes it nice and simple. But this is the beauty of SQL. You can quickly pull data, make it a smaller amount, uh, do some basic filtering, do some quick aggregations, and you can do it in merely seconds, which is incredible. This data set from what I recall, ha this is an older one, but I'm pretty sure it had, it had around 500 rows of data. Let's see what we got now. So 471, my most latest one has about right. 700 something, but besides the point. <laughs> um, what's great about SQL is that you can get all these rows of data and you can aggregate it, you can provide more insights just that more than just the raw data that's what's really cool about this and that's what's most powerful about this there are more aggregates that we can get into as well we can do things like there's sum, there's max min we also have average i mean there's so many different aggregates that we can use but this is honestly just like the basic foundation of sql it's just grabbing some tables putting them together and getting some quick insights most importantly just pulling data quickly i would say it gets more complicated when you're trying to add multiple tables together but we'll save that for another video right now since this uh, data set only has one table it makes it easy easier. Uh, working with just one table is the dream, but uh, that's never, of course, really how it is. Typically, like I said, you have about 15 to 20 tables or entities, and you're able to uh, work between those and join them together to make more insights and get, let's say, like millions of rows of data and really condense it down into about a couple thousand maybe instead to make it uh, more valuable and easier to handle and use as well. That is the basics of SQL, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something new from this. I definitely want to dive more into some SQL examples and really, yeah, just teach more of the complexities behind it and why it is actually so important to know and why it is an incredible tool to use in any of your projects moving forward. If you had any specific questions or want me to go into any specific topics, feel free to let me know. Feedback on this would be incredible as I'm still trying to learn what it's like to uh, teach this on the internet. <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.